Hello and welcome. Today we are in the tier 9 Pan-Asian battleship, the Baji, which I assume is a Chinese battleship or supposed to be, and I don't actually know how to pronounce that, so I apologize for butchering that. Uh, I just... I'm not sure, despite the fact that I've actually read this name many, many times in uh, Chinese uh, web novels that I've read, but um, for some reason I just... I've never thought of how I would actually try to pronounce this name. Anyway, she is still a work in progress, meaning that she is subject to change. Also, she was given to, given to me by Wargaming for review purposes, so I could show it to you guys. Essentially, she is an Izumo. Very, very similar, as far as I could tell. The same armor scheme, the same almost all of the stats, except she has... More range, significantly more range at that, 25.4 kilometers compared to Izumo's 21.7. And she is supposedly more accurate. I say supposedly because it's hard to tell because we only get the weird dispersion numbers and not stuff like Sigma, etc. Also, she has a longer reload than the Izumo, which leads me to believe that the uh, better accuracy is true. So... What does this mean? Well, I think Izuma is actually a rather misunderstood ship. And honestly, this game that you'll be seeing here is not the greatest. It's pretty mediocre. However, you'll see, in my opinion, the greatest aspect of the Izuma showcased in this match, which is her armor. Despite the fact that Izuma has had a very, well, let's say, rough... Uh, People haven't thought the greatest uh, of Izuma's armor, however, I would say nowadays actually it's really really good. It's one of the best in my opinion, as far as uh, higher tier ships go. Like, certainly better than Yamato for example. Now, the Baji has the same armor scheme, like as far as I can tell. Which means that she's actually resistant to AP, and the middle part that you can see, like, right, it's a pretty big portion. That's the middle deck, which is 57mm, meaning that the only HE that can basically pen it are the new Royal Navy heavy cruisers that are still a work in progress. Meaning that this ship is actually fairly resistant to HE spam and AP spam. And uh, you'll see me showcase the AP resistance part quite a lot this match, because I'll be somewhat broadside-ish towards the enemy, and I won't be punished for it. At least not heavily. People, like right now, I just got shot out by a Jamba and I... What is that? I took like 5k damage? That's because um, she's just very resistant to that type of damage. And AP is actually quite difficult to make use of. Also, also, I noticed something interesting when I looked at some graphs. Unfortunately, they weren't, weren't available for the Baji. However, they were available for the Izumo and I noticed that actually Izumo has Slightly better penetration than Yamato at close range, so we're talking like 5 or 6 kilometers and below. Which kind of... It's quite surprising, if, you know, to put it mildly, because uh, I always thought the bigger guns just meant Yamato was always going to have more penetration, but apparently not. So I'm playing with a standard uh, battleship build, so priority target, fire prevention, concealment, blah blah blah, you know, the usual battleship stuff. I also showed the ship in port later at around, I would say, the 11, 12, 13 minute mark, and they'll go over the commander skills and the armor scheme of the ship, etc. So if you're interested in that, and uh, I'd like to say you can skip ahead, but no, watch the match, at least a little bit of it, because you'll see just how rather effective it is. It's pretty foolproof, if I'm honest. Like, you have to show a lot of broadside with an Izumo to be able to be Citadel, especially by battleships like uh, Jambat, because they just... they don't have the penetration with their 380 guns, and there's a lot of them this game. Also, when compared to the Iowa, which the enemy team has, I would actually pick the Izumo nowadays. I just don't think the Iowa really brings enough to the table to justify herself. Now, one thing I would like to note, though, is that Izuma and the Baji, um, despite the fact that they might have all of their guns at the front, this doesn't actually change the way you operate the guns. So it's not like, say, Mogami's front turrets that are all pointing at the front. 
the uh, rear turret or the turret at the very back or in this case more towards the superstructure actually is pointing you know it's basically a rear turret like you would get on any other battleship meaning that it behaves the same way so if you're you know pointing your guns one way and then turning the other way you know it'll turn backwards compared to the other two so you don't actually gain anything like that. It's not like the Nelson, for example. I believe Nelson had the better, lo better, la better layout like that. And so that is kind of unfortunate. However, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, you can just play around it. Although I do wish the firing angles were on it were slightly better, but because the Baji and the uh, Izumo don't exactly have the same, at least not quite as bad cheek problems as Yamata does, as far as I could tell, um, it's not actually that bad. You can certainly utilize it, especially against French battleships like these that just don't bring that much penetration to the table. Otherwise, the ship seems fairly normal. She might have slightly better anti-air, but I might just be misremembering that. But then again, um, anti-air is more of suggestion anyway, rather than like the numbers meaning anything, because whenever... A CV attacks you, you're, there's never enough anti-air, and uh, if you're the CV, there's always too much anti-air. So regardless which it is, um, you're going to be unhappy with it. So, at this point, we're against these two battleships. If we can take both of them out, I think um, our team will get a significant lead on this side of the map. Also, I'm in a division with Streps today is playing a Yuguma, which means that we'll be helping him against the Z-39. Wow, my front turret got actually taken out, but luckily it's only temporarily. I do turn in, because I'm being shot at, and there could be torpedoes, because it's hard to tell if somebody had launched torpedoes a, a while ago, considering she hasn't been visible the entire time. But we are seemingly taking care of their Z-39. Once their JB over here is gone, I think I'll turn around and I guess we'll head towards the other side of the map to try to deal with that. First of all, of course, the destroyer, which we managed to finish off properly. Because for some reason, Streffs just can't aim. And he was unable to finish her, which would have been quite a shame if she got away. Anyway, I'm showing a lot of broadside to this JB now, but it doesn't matter because she's gone. Next up, it's the Zara, although I think it's unlikely that we'll be able to deal with her. We might deal some damage, but she's probably just going to be able to run away and, uh, you know, wiggle herself out of this position, because the Italian cruisers are very, very maneuverable. Zara is, isn't actually that fast of an Italian cruiser, but she's fast enough that she'll probably get away. Besides, the CV would most certainly complicate things. I didn't want to push forward against the JB that's behind this island that I was looking at earlier. I mean, you can tell on the minimap. Because I would be sandwiched by the JB and the Lexington planes. And she's low HP enough that I just need to wait some more and the JB will be taken care of. I'm going to run aground here uh, because, uh, well, I want to avoid as ma many torpedoes here as possible. If I wasn't trying that, I probably wouldn't run aground, but... Hey, you know, it's not that bad. And there's there we run aground. Also, the I might have done a lot of anti-air damage this match, but that's because the CV player um, doesn't seem to know what flak is because uh, she doesn't seem to be dodging that flak all that much. Anyway, nothing to do here, so we're speeding it up. No, the Baji is not this fast, sadly. Would be kind of funny if she were. And we actually have the CV. You see, this is one of the advantages of the Baji over the Izuma. Izuma couldn't have fired here. Well, I mean, which is technically true. It's just that I think the effect is going to be the same. Because uh, it's very hard to hit ships at this kind of range. Especially if you're not very good at... Uh, if you're not very used to using these types of guns. Which I obviously am not. And... As a result, I just missed the Lexington anyway. So, next up, it's another JB. I mean, 
seems like there was like a giveaway of them or something because everybody seems to be having one or playing one. There's also the Iowa. I'm gonna take the shot on her because she shows more broadside to me at the moment and thus should be an easier target. The Atago and our implacable are running away but... But that doesn't matter. I should be able to deal with uh, both of them or at least with the help of the CV I should be able to deal with both of them. Especially if the JB actually shows broadside and whatnot. We're just basically hoping with these owls, because obviously she has 410 guns, just like the Izumo, which means that you can't overmatch the bow or stern or any of the 32mm, which you could in a Yamato. So this means we're just trying to hit superstructure and uh, hope for broadside or something like that. Also, I tell the enemy Iowa that I want to ram her, which probably isn't going to happen, but it's still nice to say. Well, unfortunately, that was no damage. But I'll keep going. I mean, the JB just doesn't deal that much damage to me, despite the fact that I'm showing quite a bit of sight to her. And she's probably going to be taken care of before I have to deal with her anyway, because... Well, Arata guy is most certainly very happy to fire Ichi at her. And the JB, unfortunately for her, is 32mm all over, so she probably takes a lot of that damage. Next up, we deal with the Iowa. All we have to really do here is just go bow on, and the Iowa probably won't do too much, although she actually did break on one of our turrets, which is somewhat annoying, but we can deal with it. Because Io actually is going to have a lot more trouble dealing with the Baji or the Izumo if you just don't show them broadside. Because the Izumo superstructure is kind of tiny, unlike Iowa's. So if both of us just go, you know, head on, I think the Iowa is probably going to lose that fight eventually. She'll just take more damage, I think. Although there are some sections at the front of, uh, of an Izumo that could probably take more damage, but... I suppose it doesn't matter because the Iowa is showing me broadside, which means that she's gonna get heavily punished for this. Got the Sittal on her, and uh, we're gonna get some more most likely since she does not appear to be angling. She did hit our broadside. Which is kind of weird considering we're angled, which means that they basically did nothing at all. Anyway, goodbye Iowa. Okay, it's goodbye now then. And there she goes. So, you probably saw how effective this armor was against AP, even when showing quite a bit of side. And you just didn't take that much damage in return. And it's quite effective against HE2 because of the middle 57mm armor plate, which I'll show in port quite soon. Unfortunately, I managed to uh, get less XP than Streff, so obviously I'm just going to uh, make it based on kills. That way, you know, this is the real order that matters. Streff's down there pff, among the noobs. I mean, I'm at least top two, right? So let's check out the detailed report so we can actually take a look at some of the damage. 2 million potential damage, 125k damage. Okay, our damage output wasn't the greatest, but the amount of uh, shells we took was quite something. So here you can see. So I took 10 AP shells from one JB, 12k damage, 7 from another, 7k damage. Uh, consider how much broadside I showed. Uh, I took 20 AP shells from the Iowa, 21k damage. Yeah, it is pretty effective versus AP. Also, if anyone's interested in recommendations for Chinese web novels, I recommend Tales of the Reincarnated Lord and uh, Black Iron's Glory. They're both from the same author and I have to say they're a lot better than basically any of the other Chinese web novels I've read. I, I like both of them quite a bit. Because the author seems to have put a lot of thought into making the world work and uh, things don't happen instantly in it, which is quite nice. So, let's take a look at the Baji in pot. I think she is actually a very sweet looking ship. I really like, actually like the Izumo's look, so 
Considering that the ship essentially looks identical. Well, I definitely like her look. Not the stern part really, but the uh, the front part. It just looks really, really nice. The This line right here, it looks so nice in my opinion. I just wish there was less uh, weathering and rust and whatnot. Anyway, let's take a look at the stats and commander skills. I guess commander skills actually first, huh? So, it's a standard. This is the standard battleship build, so priority target, expert marksman, superintendent, concealment expert, fire prevention, basics of survivability, and then adrenaline rush. This is the basic battleship survival build, and that's what you should probably take on everything you don't know what to take on as a battleship. Consumables. Standard battleship damage control party. Standard heal as far as I can tell. And then you have a choice between a spotting aircraft or a fighter. But considering you have a 25.4 kilometer range without the range upgrade. I don't think you're going to need the spotting aircraft. Okay. In fact if you need the spotting aircraft. Um, you might want to rethink your play. Okay. Uh, there could be probably slight improvements you could do. Upgrades wise. It's. Fairly standard as well, main arts modification, damage control systems modification, aiming systems, You, I guess you could go anti-air, then damage control system modification 2 because you want fewer fire or less fire duration, then obviously concealment again, and then reload because again, you have 25.4 kilometers so if you're considering the range upgrade, um, you might want to think twice. So, let's take a look at the uh, stats of the ship. So, 78,900 HP, which is identical to the Izuma. I even think the torpedo protection should be identical. The guns, 9 guns. Uh, even though they're all at the front, they're actually still the same layout as all the other battleships, more or less, because uh, this turret is backwards rather than forwards, meaning that... Uh, this still rotates like a rear turret on all the other battleships, so you don't really gain that much from it. Also, I don't know if this actually holds for the uh, Baji, but the Izumo actually has slightly more penetration than Yamato at, I think, below like 7 kilometers or so. And it wouldn't surprise me if this ship might even be better at that. Anyway. So, um, the guns though, compared to the Izumo, they're... A slightly longer reload uh, but from what I understand they are more accurate how this accuracy translates I believe it's due to uh, the Sigma values although it's unsure because we don't see any of this information in pot not to mention that uh, as with the Goliath there might be things that have changed which aren't represented in the pot but anyway, these stats will basically tell you that the reload is slightly longer than the Izuma. And I guess if it's slightly more accurate, it's fine. She does have slightly more range. Actually, it's significantly more range. 25.4 kilometers versus Izuma's 21.7. But let's be honest. You're only going to use maybe one or two kilometers of this range. And it's only going to be once in a while per match. Like at the start maybe and maybe towards the end. But you, have, you could have a scout plane for that. And tire. Um, we can take a look at the numbers. But again, this doesn't mean anything because you're... Okay, so entire The values mean nothing at all. Because entire does nothing at all. Unless you're a CV. If you're a CV, then entire is way too strong and needs to be nerfed. But if you're not a CV, entire does nothing at all. Or at least that's how it feels to me. Which is why these numbers, again... Don't mean anything because we're not a CV. Although, considering how big and empty this deck is, it wouldn't surprise me if you could make this into a CV. Speed, 28 knots, I believe. So this is 29.4 with the flag, 890 meter turning circle. Actually, no, never mind, that's pretty bad. But then again, it's a battleship. 20 second rudder shift is also pretty standard for these battleships. Concealment is, uh, I mean... It's not actually quite as bad as it could be, but it's pretty bad. But the main thing that I like about the ship is actually the armor scheme. Especially when compared to the Yamato. And, and as far as I can tell, the ship has the same armor scheme as the Izuma. So, 
For a long time, the Izumo suffered from a reputation problem in that her armor scheme was considered very weak. Because I don't know if her a if she was buffed against AP at some point. I don't remember. I just remember that uh, my opinion of the ship over the years changed from Izumo being a ship that's very easy to deal damage to to a ship that's kind of resistant to AP. So AP is kind of not cool. Uh, but on the other hand, she was still very fragile versus HE because she was 32 millimeters all over. All these green parts were 32. So HE spam was very effective, but then that got changed too. So now, as you can see, the middle part is 57mm deck. Well, the side, yeah, 32, but the deck is 57. If your HE shells hit any of this green stuff here that's highlighted, uh, unless you're like the Royal Navy Heavy Cruiser, you're not gonna pen. You're just gonna deal damage, you're just gonna get fires, but you're not gonna pen this. And if you look at the size of the superstructure, it's actually pretty small compared to the size of the ship, so this isn't actually the easiest thing to hit. Now, of course, the uh, stern and bow are pretty large, and they are 32. But most players will still try to hit the middle part, and this actually is fairly effective against fire damage. Or, well, not fire damage, HE. Of course, the sides aren't quite, but still, I mean... The main thing you would like to actually hit is the bow, most likely, on a cruiser. Because that is something you can hit. So actually Izumo is fairly tanky against HE and AP both nowadays. But now let's take a look at uh, the AP. First let's take a look at Citadel I suppose. So this is the Citadel of the Izumo. As you can see it actually does sit above the waterline. However, I think it looks, I think it's actually smaller than Yamato Citadel. And the main thing is that this is a sloped Citadel as you can see, right? There's a slight angle there, and it's sloped, you know, kind of like Yamato with the cheeks, but the cheeks are actually much more angled. So you, so shooting the Izuma from over here will likely not go through this. You would have to have a much better angle. So you might be able to get through this cheek right here, right? But not always, and you still have to get through, you know, the uh, this part, this 356 armor plate. To do that, which I don't know. I mean, Izumo Citadel seems much more better protected. If you show flat broadside, yeah, sure, they'll probably get some penetrations, but uh, or some citadels, but overall, not that much. Captain, hurry up if you want to make good use of your Mediterranean tokens. To do so, navigate to the Italian Navy section of the armory and choose your reward with the release of. Okay. Okay, Wargaming. That was unnecessary information. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that this ship is actually better against AP. Like, I would much rather be in this ship than Yamato when I'm being shot at by AP. Especially close range. Because, I mean, this is 410. And if you're like bow on like this, they're not going to go through this, uh, you know, slope deck right there. Which is quite nice. And uh, it doesn't have much of a cheek at the back either, unlike, well, Yamato. Also, also, uh, check out how big this bow is, right? Look, look at how large this is. Like, if you don't hit below the front guns, you're not actually getting any citadels at all. Which um, is quite nice. Oh, and since there's no rear turret, there's no rear section of the citadel either. So, all in all... I think uh, armor-wise, the Baji and the Izumo are both really good nowadays. And uh, it kind of surprises me how people don't have much of a good opinion of them. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I would like to thank the patrons on Patreon. Thank you very much for your continued support, Nashiro. And I hope I'll see you guys next time.